So Weva is 30, just over 30 years old, and we've been serving all self-identified women who've experienced any form of sexualized violence. We received just over 4,000 calls on our crisis line last year. And some of those women we saw for one-to-one -one counseling, and some of them were involved in our support groups, and um, some of them we supported through the medical system or the legal system. So we can accompany women to the hospital if they've experienced sexual assault, and um, we go with them to the sexual assault service at Vancouver General Hospital, and we make sure that they get everything they need. And we can go with women to report to the police, and we can also go with women through the court system if that's something that they need. So um, lots and lots of women. Women and girls can survive a lot. Survivors are resilient and strong, and they always, always resist. Wherever there's oppression and violence, people resist. And that looks like a lot of different things. Sometimes that's just breathing and getting through an experience. Sometimes that's telling someone that you trust. Sometimes that's not talking about it in order to keep your safety. So when we shame or blame survivors, when we call them sluts or whores, that isolates women and, and girls, and we know that they can't, um, that it's much harder to heal. My job, I think is the best job. I get to do educational outreach, which means I get to go into schools, I get to talk with young people. I mean, that just fuels me so much to see young people really care about um, changing our attitudes, changing our culture, uh, demanding better from the media, from our schools, all of that, it's great. I get to go and speak to the media as well, and uh, to high schools and universities, and at events and film festivals, things like that, and conferences, so it's really exciting. The work that we're doing, um, it's also hard. It's really hard. It's hard to witness suffering, always, and we know that sexual assault is a huge problem, um, but it's, uh, it's really an honor to work here. When I think about equality, I think about the way that everyone deserves to be treated. <laughs> it uh, means that women get paid equal amounts for equal work. Uh, opportunity, uh, strictly on the basis of all merit. And the way that everyone deserves dignity and respect. And everyone deserves to be honored and loved for who they are, their authentic self in the world. We know that because gender roles are so narrow and we get put in these really tiny boxes about this is how to be a man and this is how to be a woman, that really limits us. And we have this idea that certain traits are more valuable. So the things that we associate with masculinity and with men are, are seen to be more valuable. A lot of efforts to deal with sexual assault end up being safety tips that we give to women. And what we think that does is puts the blame and the onus and the responsibility to prevent sexual assault back on women and girls. And we don't think that's where it should be. So when it's all about like, don't wear this, don't walk alone at night, don't leave your drink unattended, all that stuff, we think that women should have all of the information they need to make the best decisions for themselves. But what we want, what we think would make women the safest, is holding men accountable. Mm -hmm. Our organization requires a lot of funding, it requires a pretty big budget in order to do everything that we do. Uh, because we have so many services um, and because there isn't a lot of funding from the government actually, um, there should be more. Um, over Just over 50% of our funding comes from donors. So we have about 9,000 unique donors who contribute to the work that we do and it really, really helps us out. Uh, we would want to make sure that we get rid of our wait list. That would be the first thing we would do is get rid of our wait list. We have a year and a half wait list. Um, that's unacceptable. For counseling? Um, yes. Oh. That's, that's almost 200 women waiting for counseling, for one-to-one -one counseling right now. Mm -hmm. And there are things that we do to alleviate that, so we offer support groups to women on the wait list, but it's not the same as having that one-to-one -one service, and sometimes that's what women know that they need, and that's what they want, and we want to be able to offer that, and we want to be able to offer it now. WEVA's vision is a society where all women are free from violence. And I think if we live in a society where all women are free from violence, then we will live in a society where everyone is free from violence.